to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech and science from your favorite movies, video games, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Hey, is your TV remote always out of reach? Well, today I'm asking Michael from Vsauce.com about where we are with this whole telekinesis thing, and when can I get it? You guys think it's possible? Fazino on Facebook says, if God can make you work, God can make you telekinetic. If you think about it, nothing is impossible. Hmm. Michael from Vsauce, thank you so much for Skyping in all the way from London. Thank you very much for having me on, Veronica. This is very exciting. Of course. Now you have to explain the origin of Vsauce for our listeners out there. Yeah, of course. Um, so like all things that are great, it starts with the letter V. Get it? Yeah. Any Vsauce is a completely nonsensical word, right? I, I started a channel when I was... Um, gosh, three years younger than I am now. And it was a video game based channel. And the name came from fakenamegenerator.com. Get out. You can literally go to this website and you just keep refreshing it and it produces pronounceable available domain names. What? Usually it's stuff like milwaukeebowlingclub.com. But one day it said vsauce.com available. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's only six letters and it could literally mean anything. So we were, we were about video games. I wasn't so good at video games and I decided to just talk about what I love, which is being an autodidact, learning yourself, learning on your own, asking weird questions and discovering what's out there. So that's where we are today. Telekinesis and tele telepathy is kind of what we're talking about here today. So do you think our brain is capable of performing those kinds of tasks? Of course it is. We do this every single day. If I'm allowed a shout out to some of my explanatory buddies on YouTube, Minute Physics has a great video about telekinesis, action over a distance, and how it happens, and how we learned about how it happens, right? When I drop the gum out of my mouth, I hope you saw that over the feed. I did. But how did my gum, which I'm now holding, know to fall to Earth? Earth didn't grab it, it just moved. There was some sort of action occurring over a distance, and that could technically still be called telekinesis, but right? Wouldn't that just be gravity? Well, okay, but here's the thing, right? That's how amazing gravity is. Now, in terms of telekinesis as we know it from science fiction, I'm very skeptical. It's totally cool, and it's a great sign of how powerful our imaginations are, but whenever action is occurring over a distance, as far as we know, there is a medium or some sort of exchange of particles between those two things. Right? I can't move you to tears with mind power, but I could if I just said some really terrible things to you right now. But that would still require sound waves and air between us to transmit that sound. Don't be sad, this is totally hypothetical. But I think the key is that even though I personally am, you know, don't believe that telekinesis in the sci-fi way doesn't exist now, probably won't exist as we imagine it for a long time, but yet the the physics of action over a distance using fields and things smaller than we can see is happening every day. Telekinesis can include the, the movement of micro and macro objects, the transmutation of matter, control of magnetism and photons. Well, let's see, what else am I missing here? Have any of these been proven to exist or is this just total sci-fi nonsense? Well, of course. I mean, magnetism, that's a field that works over a distance. And, you know, human beings um, have slight magnetic uh, properties themselves, we certainly emit photons. I mean, put on a pair of infrared goggles and you can see my body even in pitch darkness because my body is controlling and emitting photons from the electrons of the atoms of my body. So maybe through concepts like biofeedback, we can actually start to think of people controlling their own body temperature, controlling the wavelength of the photons they emit, and, and in a real sense, sending out and controlling, as you said, photons hmm. with their minds. We're talking a lot about telekinesis. Does that kind of fall under the same family tree as telepathy? Do they work, would they work in similar ways? There's just so little still known about what a thought is, what the brain is, but we are, but the cool, the cool thing about how little we know is how much we can do. Like, think about this. So the human body has iron, the metal inside of it. We 
have iron on the nutrition labels of our food. Your body and my body probably contain about three grams of iron, and we are moving that iron around in our body because of our minds every day. That's like moving three paper clips around technically with your mind. It's not a cop-out answer to say that that's amazing. Now, whether or not it's telekinesis in the sci-fi sense, well, sorry, I, not really. I, I kind of like these connections you're making, because it, even though it, it seems very, like it's unconscious thought, like it's not stuff that we're doing on purpose. And yes, it's controlled by the mind, but it's these automatic functions of our body and how we're put together. But to kind of connect them to telekinesis in a way, I think is, is pretty interesting. Sure, and the idea of biofeedback and meditation means that maybe it's not all completely automatic. Perhaps my consciousness can have control over my brain, meaning that I can increase and decrease my heart rate through meditation or relaxation, and in doing so, change how quickly I move my blood cells and the iron inside them. Um, it's not the same as bending an iron spoon with my mind powers, but isn't it just as cool? It is. Uh, but let's move to some more like ethical questions. Uh, do you think if these things really did exist, if we had power over these kinds of actions with our brain, would it be would it be too much power for people? Would it be the kind of thing that would be abused on a regular basis? I think it would amaze us. For instance, it would amaze us to be able to read everyone's mind and realize how little people really think about and care about us. There's a, a classic psychological fallacy, which is that we're concerned that people are constantly thinking of us and having opinions about us, when in reality, they're more concerned about themselves. Could someone abuse mind control? Maybe, but if we really understood mind control enough to leverage it against people, hopefully we would also know how to protect ourselves. Um, I think the, the, the consequence that's not spoken about enough is just how interesting it would be to realize what other people are thinking all the time. Mm, I don't know if I want to know, personally. I think I, that's I best certainly... left unsaid. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would love to know. I think that I you, we would learn so much about human behavior, right? There's a classic psychology, oh, what is this called? The fundamental attribution error, right? It's the fact that we blame bad things that we do on the outside environment. Mm -hmm. I was mean to the barista because I'm having a bad day and that woman was being really rude. But yet that woman was rude because she's just a rude bad person. Well, if we could really read each other's minds, I think we would understand that that truly is a fallacy. We're all individual people and we all deserve a fair shake. All right, well, that, that's a good thought to end on. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael. And we will catch you on YouTube, Vsauce.com. Yeah, Vsauce.com, YouTube.com slash Vsauce. There's just sauce all over the place. It's Everywhere, great. just all the Vsauce. I know, yeah. I, I know how that goes. <laughs> that sounds right. terrible. So I'm giving this topic a fact, but just on a micro level, our brains move millions and billions of neurotransmitters every second. Those are things, right? I think so. Michael seems to think so. However, don't expect me to go all fire starter or carry on you anytime soon. Or will I? You asked for Vsauce and you got them. So keep suggesting those guests that you want to see on the show and we will do our best to get them on. But if you want to see your mug on the show, leave me a video response. Also, share this episode on Twitter using the hashtag fact or fictional to be eligible to win some TechFeed swag. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont and this is Fact or Fictional on TechFeed. Be sure to subscribe to see all of our new shows. And don't forget to stay up to date with Scott and Annie on TechFeed News. I'll see you next time.